Colton Milhoff here from Matrix Robotics with tips and tricks video number nine about some of the smaller parts of the building system. These include the standoffs, the axle collar, the molded spacers, the nylon washers, and the caster wheel, and about how all these fit into the matrix grid. Now the matrix grid is essentially the eight millimeter hole pattern matrix robotics is based off of, and how all the parts kind of fit together very nicely. Now a good example of the matrix grid um, before we start using these pieces is with the gearbox on the lead screw assembly. Now if you haven't seen the lead screw and think, wow, that's a cool part, go check out a previous tips and tricks video and it talks all about the lead screw. Uh, we show lead screw arm and a scissor lift. Go check it out after this video. Um, but on this gearbox, we actually have a C channel here and coming off of it, we have two joiner beams and that makes it so that the holes on the joiners still line up with this three by three plate that the axle is going through. If we used just L beams, those holes would be too close together and this three by three gusset plate would not line up with those holes. So that's kind of what we're talking about with the, the matrix grid and how to make all your pieces line up. The first part we'll talk about, since we have this out, is the four millimeter spacer. Now the reason the four millimeter spacer exists is because it makes gears line up with the motors. So let's say that you take a motor and you have a, put a gear onto it, you'll notice there's some space between the gear and the bracket that that motor is on. Now the bracket is on grid, so all the faces on that, those are on the grid. But since that gear is spaced off of it to make room for the screws and things that go along with that motor, it isn't quite on grid, but we made it so that the gear is off exactly four millimeters. So then, when you put on your other gear, you can put a four millimeter spacer between the part that lines up with the bracket of the motor and your other gear. That way these two gears mesh perfectly. They're just in line by putting that four millimeter spacer between the other C-channel and that gear. Makes them line up nice and well. So that's what your four millimeter spacer is designed for. You can also use it to space off other parts, um, and even more useful for spacing off other parts would be the 8mm spacer because that keeps everything on grid. If you took two C channels, and let's say that you space them off using 8mm spacers like this, you are still going to be on grid if you try to put a part across here. All those holes still line up. The four millimeter spacer, you'd end up having the holes actually right in the middle of other holes, so you couldn't get the screws through there. And the standoffs work the same way. So with these spacers, you'd have a screw going through and then a nut on the other side. If you use standoffs instead, you could use a standoff like this, and you'd have a screw going through this way and a screw going through that way, and then that is going to work out as well. You have all those holes lined up. So these are 16 millimeter standoffs and these are 32 millimeter standoffs. So we've got a 4 millimeter, an 8 millimeter, a 16 millimeter, and 32 millimeter. You can make any spacings that you want. Once we add in that washer, you can even adjust it um, by a hair if you don't need it beyond grid. So you can do the same thing with the 32 millimeter standoffs here and that will also make the holes line up nice and well. Um, notice that 32 millimeter standoff is the same size as a C-channel. So let's say you had to make something like this. Now that isn't going to be very strong. So you could take a standoff and put it between the holes up here and then everything is still on grid because all these holes still line up. They put holes and screws through all of them. Also on grid is the caster wheel. So the caster wheel is 16 millimeters, almost 16 millimeters across. It's actually not quite 16 millimeters. And that is so that when you assemble a caster wheel assembly, it is not pushing on the walls of your assembly. You have a little bit of space for it to wiggle and you can spin freely. So since we talked about how the C channel or the C beam, since the C beam is 32 millimeters across, 
you can take the 16 millimeter, approximately 16 millimeter caster wheel, a eight millimeter spacer, and the axle collar. And the axle collar is almost eight millimeters as well. So when you line those up, you get a little bit of space. Um, it's not quite 32 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is take a nylon washer and put it between the axle collar and the metal uh, gusset plate. And that is so that those do not bind on each other. Plastic or polycarbonate is actually what we use. We don't use plastic, but polycarbonate is a very good uh, natural lubricant. So it lubricates itself as it goes along. Um, metal doesn't do that. So we need to take the nylon washer and put it between the axle collar and the gusset plate so we don't get extra friction there or wear down the parts. And then that works nice and well. Another good spot to put the nylon washers would be between your wheels and other metal parts. So for example, down here, we would have a nylon washer between the bearing plate and the wheel. So then those don't rub against each other, be a lot less friction. If you haven't seen the racer, also go check out a previous tips and tricks video. I'll show you how to build one of these. I'll show you where to get the um, surgical tubing. Um, very fun, very fun competitive thing you think you can do without having computers and programming with just the building system that way. So here's one more example of the grid pattern, the matrix grid, how we can line up a servo bracket, which is a even number of eight millimeters from this side of the servo bracket to that side, and then put on two standoffs, and then the inside of this gusset plate and the inside of this gusset plate are on grid. So then we know that those two are a good length for putting an axle in, and then that all fits very well. So all the parts in the matrix or box building system fit with the matrix grid. You just need to figure out which sides of parts are on grid and which sides are off grid and just use the parts that are the sides that are on grid to the sides that are on grid. So if we look at this cast wheel assembly, the outside of this gusset plate is actually off grid and the inside of the gusset plate is on grid because that is a side that's made in with the outside of the C-beam. For more information on this, go check out one of the previous tips and tricks videos, particularly the one about joiners that talks very much about being on grid and off grid. Have fun building and good luck teams. It's going to be completely consistent. I can take this plate, a couple more quick connectors. And the holes will line up perfectly going across this joint right here. So what I've done is from the hole to this seam between the two parts is eight millimeter and then it's eight millimeters to the next one. So it's completely consistent going across.